banking law unit 5 so the first concept in the banking law unit 5 is good lending principles of a bank so what are the good lending principles of a bank the first is safety so the banker should take care that the money he is lending is in safe hand and will return that is the customer is capable of returning the money back the next is liquidity so the banker should realize that that he is lending loan for a shorter period of time and the money should return back to him on demand the next is purpose the money he is lending that purpose should be for a productive purpose the customer should use it for a productive purpose the next is diversity or risk spread the banker should not give loan to a only a one sector he should uh, spread the loan to different sectors like industrial sector education sector medical sector etc so that uh, he does not occur loss at once if the loan is uh, spread to different sector then the risk will also be spread the next is uh, profitability the sole purpose of giving loan is to earn profit by the banker so these are the good lending principles of a bank the next is e-banking remittance the next important concept is e-banking remittance so it has been asked as a long answer e-banking remittance or e-banking or new trends in banking or for all the answer is same so what do you mean by e-banking remittance it is an electronic payment system that enables customers of a bank or other financial institution to conduct a range of financial financial transactions through the financial institutions website so it is nothing but an electronic payment system e banking which enables the bank uh, customers to do transactions via internet or online through financial institutions website different types of e banking first is national electronic fund transfer neft so it is a one to one fund transfer and any individual firm and corporate can transfer money from one branch to any individual firm corporate having an account in another branch so it can be trans money can be transferred from one branch of a bank to another branch of a bank individuals who don't have account can also transfer up to rupees 50000 per transaction so it doesn't need that you have to have a bank account even if you don't have a bank account up to 50000 rupees you can transfer through neft the next type of e banking payment is real time gross settlement rtgs so it is a continuous settlement of fund individually on an order by order basis without netting so it is a continuous settlement of fund then real time means processing of instructions at time they are received and gross settlement means transfer occurs individually so the minimum amount remitted by rtgs is minimum 2 lakh rupees so if you are going to transfer at least 2 lakh rupees then you can use rtgs system the next is electronic clearing system ecs so it is an alternative method for paying bills example telephone bill insurance premium car payment etc so for the payment of bills ecs can be used the next is intermediate payment service imps so it is a 24 by 7 internet banking interbanking electronic fund transfer service through mobile phones so these are the e banking remittances the next is cyber evidence it has been asked as a short note so what is a cyber evidence it is an information stored or transmitted in binary form that may be relied in a court so it is a information in computer that is can be used in a court as evidence it can be found on a computer hard drive or mobile among other places it is commonly associated with credit card frauds and it is to fight against this the law agencies have established a computer forensics to collect cyber evidence the next concept is microfinance or lending money to poor so the banking facility provided to employed and to poor the banking facilities provided microfinance is the banking facility provided to unemployed and poor types the first is joint liability group so 5 to 10 members of group can apply for this loan and it is only for agricultural loan the next is self help group so at least 10 to 20 members 10 to 20 members can apply for this loan and it is basically applied by entrepreneurs to take loan the next is a gramin bank model so minimum 2 persons should apply for this loan 
and it is applied for a rural to take loan for rural areas the next is rural cooperative bank so minimum 70 to 80 percent should apply for this loan and it is taken for agricultural purpose the next important concept is features of a debt recovery tribunal the debt recovery tribunal is features so it is established by central government under the recovery of debts due to banks and financial institution act 1963 so the central government may establish a debt recovery tribunals the central government may also establish appellate debt tribunal which is additional to debt recovery tribunal the next is composition it contains one person who is called as a presiding officer and the qualifications of those that presiding officer is he should be at least qualified to become a district judge his term is for 5 years the staff consists of recovery officers who work under presiding officer the removal of a presiding officer is by central government on his misbehavior jurisdiction so also the jurisdiction of debt debt recovery tribunal is accept applications from banks and financial institutions for recovery of debts so it is applied by it is a recovery tribunal for bankers only so the banks if they are aggrieved by the customer not paying loan then they can apply for this tribunal the next is a credit card the credit card facility is provided by banks to allow customers to borrow funds within pre approved card limits so it is provided by banks to its customer to acquire fund to borrow fund so it is a kind of taking loan in a within a pre approved card limit so it enables transaction on goods and services the credit card limit is set by issuer on income and credit score the next important concept is banking ombudsman so banking ombudsman scheme banking ombudsman scheme is expeditious and inexpensive forum for customers of a bank for resolution of complaints relating to certain issues of a bank under section 35a of the banking regulation act 1949 so if a customer is aggrieved from a service of a bank then he can go to uh, he can apply to banking ombudsman scheme he can go to banking ombudsman scheme to get his problem solved the so banking ombudsman is a senior official appointed by rbi to redress customer complaints against a deficiency in certain banking services under clause 8 of the banking ombudsman scheme 2006 so this banking ombudsman will redress customer complaints if he is aggrieved by banking services the next is grounds for complaints on what grounds a customer can file complaint in banking ombudsman scheme the first is non payment or delay in collection of checks drafts bills etc the next is non acceptance of without a sufficient cause of the stall small denomination notes and charging commissions non payment or delay inward remittances of inward remittances failure to issue drafts or checks then non adherence to prescribed working hours failure to provide banking facility which banker agreed then non observance of rbi directives non adherence to instructions of rbi credit card operations non adherence to rbi on mobile banking and e banking then closure of deposit accounts without notice non observance on rbi on interest rates then non disbursement of pensions so these are the grounds on which a customer can file complaint in banking ombudsman scheme the next is the grounds on which banking ombudsman may reject the complaint so if the not specified not on specified grounds if the complaint is not on the specified grounds then the banking ombudsman may reject the complaint if the compensation sought is more than 20 lakh rupees so in the banking ombudsman scheme only compensation for less than 20 lakh rupees can be sought for the next is requires elaborate documentary and oral evidence and proceeding before ombudsman are not appropriate for adjudication so if it's a lengthy procedure it requires a longer documentaries and oral evidences then the ombudsman may reject the complaint the next is without a sufficient cause so if the complaint is filed by the customer without any sufficient cause then the complaint not pursued by complainant with a reasonable diligence the complaint is not uh, the complainant is not seeking the complaint with due care he is not taking any care for it the next is no loss or damage caused to the customer 
So on these grounds, the ombudsman will reject the complaint. The next important concept is kinds of securities for advances by banks. So there are three kinds of securities. One is banker's land. The next is pledge, and the third is mortgage of movables. In a banker's land, the security is given to banker with the only possession is passed, and the ownership is with the customer only. In pledge also, the only possession is passed, and the ownership is with the pledger only. But in a pledge, the pledgee has the right over his the property, and no one else can take that right from him. So no other creditor can take away that property from the pledgee, not even government. The next is mortgage of movables. In mortgage, a temporary ownership is also passed, and the holder of the property can use that property. In the case law, Halliday v. Holgate, it was held that there are th these three are the kinds of securities. The next is ATM, automated teller machine. So it is an electronic machine used for financial transactions, an automated being platform, a banking platform, which does not require any banking representatives. So it is an electronic machine which is used for financial transactions, like taking out cash, etc. There are two types of ATM. One is a simple basic unit, which is used to withdraw cash, check your balance, change pin, get mini statements, and receive account updates. And the next one is complex unit, which is used for cash or check deposits and a line of credit and bill payments. So this concludes the fifth unit. Thanks for watching.